threat of disaster is never pleasant. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. These safety measures are essential. The only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. This will be your source of survival instructions and information. Every member of the family must be coached in the business of survival. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kirby. Wrote a little note for myself. That's impossible. Stop saying you know and like. You know what you should do. It's not going to work. You know, well, stop yeah. saying you know, you know. Look, like, this is hard, you know. God, it's, it's impossible. Not, it's, it's, That's why I just don't listen to it again. I know, it's it's bad. Welcome, everybody, to the podcast. Welcome, Cameron, to the studio. Thank you. Um, how Thank are you. you? We're good. We're good. Um, what are we talking about this fine day? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave it. I'm going to surprise you. Okay. Deep in the podcast. Great. See if you can give it a title. <laughs> it's, I know. No, it's uh, uh, Prepper Organization. Yeah. Yeah, and this one's in uh, Country Magazine, Women's <laughs> Health <laughs> Magazine. The and ladies are so much better at this. They are. There's there's three or four of them on like Instagram and TikTok that they just yeah. they got this down. They do. Well, I don't. We have several people that like ask us like, "What do you guys? How do you organize your gear? Or how do you?" So it's like, "Yeah, maybe we'll just do a podcast." Yeah. And I'm sorry I for those two percent that want to hear <laughs> yeah. how to organize. Yeah, no, for sure. We're gonna talk. Uh, about before it. we get going though, I do want to talk a few, about a few things. Um, the Bugging Out Podcast episode two came out this week. If you haven't subscribed or downloaded yet. Get, Good luck. Get in gear because in they're going to all be gone. Anywhere. There's going to be no downloads <laughs> left. Go get it now while it's still hot, while they're still available. I'm surprised they don't do that. <laughs> they should, huh? You First 1,000 a- free. And, that, and after then it's that, a dollar. Yeah. And then it just goes up. From and there. then after 10,000 downloads, that's all you get. <laughs> yeah. So you hope you get that. <laughs> Speaking of that, um, we got some new shirts coming out. Mm-hmm. A new limited edition. Right? Ooh, 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 yes. You got it on right now. And your nips are hard as a rock. They're a little settled down. <laughs> they? came in. It's freaking cold, man. <laughs> I know. We got to take some pictures of the shirts, and he's like, my nips are popping, bro. Oh, my gosh. I yeah, know. Bad. It's all right, though. I was cold today, guys. But anyways, yeah, these are the shirts. Cam and I are both wearing them. Just a nice white t-shirt. It says Mad Mad World. It's clean. It's clean. Super clean. Fits nice. I like it. Um, So these are going to come out Monday if you guys want to get them. Uh, Be prepared Again it's a limited 1201 Pacific time <laughs> No I don't know what time It's gonna be like 7 in the morning or so Mountain standard time But uh, um, but there's gonna be A limited amount Of these sold We might have a few more Than we had last time Because we had a few people, people Complain like I didn't have time Yeah I'm like well I don't know what I couldn't you. calculate The time frame <laughs> yeah. Mountain standard I'm not general. a scientist I'm not a time scientist <laughs> Or a clockwork man All right. <laughs> I gotta go to work, got so they got mad do. at us. So these are gonna be coming out. Uh, they're gonna be like thirty bucks. The XXX, the the big fat ones, the big ones. They're gonna be a little bit more. Um, so just the skinny guys. I don't know what to tell you. You're gonna get a cheaper shirt. There's, there's more material. There there's is. More there's stitching. a lot. Yeah. So so uh, just look for that. That's gonna come out Monday. We're pretty excited. Uh, you're not fat. I'm just some of your big. Some of you're just strong dudes. Yeah. I don't know what's like. like seven foot. Just big yeah. old. What's tall. the Encino man thing? He's got eighteen inch buys. Mine are only four. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so that's me. Eighteen but, inch buy. Yeah, I yeah, remember that. Mine are only four. But before we get going again, I gotta talk to you about Battle Box, man. It is the monthly subscription box for men, women, children, dogs, cats, everything. Full of solid gear for adventure seekers, survivalists, outdoor enthusiasts, and casual preppers. Each month, Battle Box sends you the coolest selection of hand-picked outdoor survival and everyday carry gear, all valued at far more than what you'd normally pay. You never know what's in the next box, but here is a sampling of what users received this month, the Mimetic Trauma First Aid Kit. It's great. Yep. The Wooks Thunderbird Axe Signature Edition. Wooks. All this badassness starts at just 30 bucks a month. They've shipped almost a million boxes and won Best Men's Subscription Box of 2017. Our listeners get a free knife when you sign up at trybattlebox.com slash casual preppers. That is trybattlebox.com slash casual preppers. Get your first battle box plus a free knife at trybattlebox.com slash casual preppers. Listener reviews starts now. Yeah. Hilarious and informative. Mm. Okay. New prepper here. I've been listening to Casual Preppers podcast for about two months now. Mm -hmm. At first, I picked out which ones I thought I would get the most out of. Once I finished those episodes, I dove into the mindless banter episodes and everything else. 
I don't know what everything else was. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I can honestly say every podcast episode is a great listen. The Aww. accents and rabbit holes they verbally wandered down are hilarious. <laughs> Five-star rating, in my opinion. Keep it up. Oh, thanks, PSE92. That's, that's just how we do it. Yeah. If you guys want to be off. part of this portion of the podcast, go to iTunes, go to Facebook, leave us a five-star review, and make it awesome. Awesome. It's What's a them? mad, mad world. Make it awesome. You make it awesome. This is just like our shirts we're wearing today. It's a mad, mad world. Oh, um, my gosh, it is. Cam, I read an article. Um, according mm-hmm. to an alarming story by Science late last week, radioactive materials have gone missing from the Chernobyl disaster site that experts say could be used to make a dirty bomb. So if you don't know what a dirty bomb is, it's a DIY it's really weapon. Dirty. You mix nuclear matter with conventional explosives. It's on YouTube. Yeah, just check it on YouTube. No big. It's probably on our channel or something. But so, but shortly after uh, Russia took the 1986 disaster site, looters, um, and it's unclear whether they were Russian operatives or some other group, apparently seized radioactive materials from a lab near the site. And that's not all the dangerous stuff that's unaccounted for. Institute for Safety Problems of Nuclear Power Plants Director Anatoly Nozovsky Nozovsky told the magazine that he had lost contact with another nearby lab that had been holding powerful powerful sources of gamma and neutron radiation. <laughs> that's so, good. doesn't sound great. I'm not this, a nu- nuclear these scientist. These labs belong to us. <laughs> yeah. Give us all of them. We will take this. We will take that. <laughs> I have one of everything. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I love it. Like, imagine being a scientist and they're like, you're going to be working in lab 55. Where's that? Right next to Chernobyl. <laughs> right. What? Let's just buy this place over there. We just want follow to. the science to Chernobyl. <laughs> yeah. What do what? <laughs> follow the science to where? <laughs> just go. Just go. Okay. Vladimir says you must. Go. <laughs> yeah, not good. That's crazy. So watch well, for that's them ex- dirty bombs. That's, ex- that's exciting. Dirty bomb. We're not going <laughs> to yeah. attack any civilians. We may try some dirty bombs <laughs> yeah. out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, so this is this uh, article is a little little different, but it's just a mad, mad world because people are disgusting. Oh, and sure. And I wanted to share it. Okay. Volunteers, uh, this is Long Branch, New Jersey. Volunteers okay. picked up a record amount of trash from New Jersey's uh, beaches last year with plastic item, items dominating the hall the bizarre cast offs including male enhancement pills oh. a set of braces glow in the dark <laughs> condom Turkish airline hygiene kit wow and I'm gonna go into some more here they picked over like like all this junk and they found that plus fold so, a full set of dentures <laughs> hunk of human hair um <laughs> Uh, a thong, a used Narcan kit for drug overdose, Wow! several marijuana bags, a bullet casing, a fake eyeball, um, <laughs> lose some of these others. also a parking ticket, a lottery ticket, a glue stick, a mini refrigerator, a toilet brush, TV remote. This is all on the beach. So you know a what the cool thing jar is? Field. If you had all this on Daisy, you can mix it and make like a nuke, <laughs> like a nuclear so bomb. true. <laughs> it's like you, you have just, all you this have a car. Yeah. <laughs> I just made myself a Jeep Wrangler. That was awesome. Just put a male enhancement pills in there twice as fast. Yeah. Um, a mason yeah. jar filled with liquor, um, mm-hmm. plastic monkey, set of rosary beads. Um, yeah. Uh, wow. It just blows my mind. But they said... Um, so, yeah, it's a madman world because people are disgusting. Yeah. All told, 513,605 items were collected last year. Um, but this is the good thing is, um, there are some items that have decreased. Oh. Their discarded diapers down 41%. Oh. Total glass items down 39%. Six pack rings, you know, those are yeah. harmful to the yeah. birds and all kinds of stuff, down 27%. Birds aren't real, by the Condoms way. Condoms are down 27%. Well, People Pregnancies are care. up 27%. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a correlation there. <laughs> yeah. But this one, the tampon applicators, nicknamed locally as Jersey Beach Whistles. <laughs> <laughs> Jersey Beach Whistles. <laughs> They're down uh, 18%. I'm, next time I see one of those on the bathroom I know. floor, I'm like, dear, you left <laughs> when your I saw Jersey that. Beach Whistle on the bathroom Honey, floor. <laughs> you got two Jersey Beach Whistles just kicking around. Pick them up. Um, oh, there's crazy. also... A Part of a bowling ball, rainbow-striped women's bathing suit. Part of a bowling ball? Yeah. Man. Highway traffic cone, part of a car windshield, harmonica, CD holder filled with albums by Limp Biscuit. So, this <laughs> <Limp> is... <laughs> just one of those days. I'm just like, God, man, people just... 
Oh, yeah. Fun at the beach. Leave all of our trash. Head out. Limp is good. But I love the uh, Jersey beach whistles. They did it all for the nookie. On. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> okay? Yep. So right. there you That's go. That's a good one. Yeah. That's disgusting. It's a mad, um, mad world indeed. We're just turning into nasty, dirty people. <laughs> yeah. So, Cam, prepper organization, that's what we're talking about today. How do you organize all the crap you got to have as a prepper? Yeah. You got to have stuff. It's tough, man. It's There's a lot of stuff out there. And, like, I think I'm constantly going through, like, I got to organize this. Yes. And then a week later, I'm like, I got to reorganize this. Yeah. And then we get some more stuff from BattleBox. I got to reorganize. So, it's just crazy. There's tons of stuff yeah. all the time, it seems like. And when you're, you know... um, just adding stuff, buying little bits and pieces here and there from the grocery stores, we'll add some water. Like, how do you keep it all and, straight? And it's not even just adding. I mean, we'll talk about this later too. It's also when you take stuff out of there, you got to know what you've taken yeah, and what you too. have. So it's it's this constant seems like after process. summer, like camping, you just like yeah. go through everything, you're yeah. missing parts and stuff. Yeah, so. for sure. But yeah, why why even organize? I mean, why should you keep this all straight? So one, you know, it helps you know where items are when you need them. Obviously, yeah, because that. That seems so stupid and simple, but, like, there's so many times I'm like, yeah. oh, I need to go grab, you know, a sheath for this knife I want to mm-hmm. throw in my backpack for some reason. It's not on there. Well, I, well, I was, what or was I looking for the other day? medical gear. I'm always looking for, like, where's my bandages? Oh, so I was looking where's for my, the, my uh, potassium iodide pills. I'm like, I know I have them yeah. somewhere, but it was it's, just lost. <laughs> Yeah. I found them eventually, and I'm like, I got to stop Half doing my mouse. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, they're thyroid, fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's so, it's so critical, because like, if you buy it, you want to be able to use it when you need it. Yeah. Right? It's, it's Otherwise. It's so frustrating. Doesn't matter. And that just goes along with everything in life. Yeah. It's like, I just saw the, the set of pliers somewhere. Yes. Right? Oh, gosh. Um, other thing is help family members, you know, mm-hmm. uh, to know where items are when you're not there. That's a big, that's a big one. Like, yeah, so like it should if be you're obvious. not there... And your family needs to grab their bug out bags or get some stuff in their bug out bags. They need to know where that stuff is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it helps you know what gear you're lacking. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of your inventory. Yes. You know where you're lacking, what you need to restock, what you need to, you know, clear out, get rid of, and and replace. So that's a big that's a big deal. A couple things there. Uh, where to start? That's the hardest part. It's like, you know, I've got so much stuff. Like, how do I... What do I, what do I want to do with all this stuff? Mm. And I think the first thing you've got to do is like choose a location. You yeah, know, sure. I'm going to store the majority of my food in this location, but my gear I'm going to put here. Like you, you, you're not going to lay it all out and not know, you yeah. got to know where you're going to put it all. So where are you going to store your supplies? And it may, it may come down to like, what's the best location that's easily accessible, that's protected you know, you can control the environment. Obviously sure. your food, your water, things like that, you're going to want to, you want to go for a basement. A lot of places don't have that. So storing, you know, your water and your food out in the garage isn't the best because the yeah. temperatures are going to fluctuate a lot more there. So you've got, you've got to kind of organize like, where's the location going to be best for my food, my water, that's going to be safe. Consider the location you're in too. If you're going to put all your stuff in the basement in a flood zone, mm. then, you know, you could just ruin it all if you don't have a good system set up. So, um, emergency supplies and food, uh, may be more easily accessible on the main floor. You know, if you're flood or an issue, like you want to be able to get to certain supplies quicker. Sure. So you got to kind of organize first, like the areas. Okay. I'm going to put this, this here, get it cleared out, get it ready. And then, um, consider in an apartment, we'll talk a little bit more about this, where you have limited space, you're going to have to consider like shelving, uh, putting stuff under your bed, you know, lifting the couches and stuff like that. So you can kind of hide stuff underneath, uh, your regular everyday furniture. Yeah. It's Um, not easy. Apartments are tough. They they suck. I hate them. Yeah. But sometimes sometimes that's all you get. That's all you get. Yeah. We've all done it. Well, maybe we all haven't. Many of us have. Many of us have done it. I don't want to lie. Because all of us haven't. Yeah. But yeah. Most of the time. (laughs) Most of the time time you've experienced a very small living quarter. Um, and then start first with like a list, like get an inventory, a blank uh, one. And so like when yes. you're pulling this stuff out and you're starting to organize, this is the hardest part for me. And it really makes the most sense. It's like, it so does. you got to make an inventory. We're going to talk about this a little bit later again, but here's the thing. If you're just starting out, start this yeah. now. Seriously. Cause like, I'm going to start getting food. Yeah. Stuff, it mm-hmm. gets out of control. It's like out of control when you get to a certain point and it's overwhelming and you don't want to yeah. do it. Take it from me. Yeah, me you don't too, want to do me it. too. Yeah, we're constantly like, what do we have? Um, like cans of you know food. Like, where are we at with that? What's the date on stuff? Yes. Like, do we have? 
find out you just have like six rows, you know, of stacked like uh you have <laughs> like olives. Yeah. You don't have any meat, you mm-hmm. don't have any it's like right. making that inventory right off the bat. Or if you have a lot of stuff and you're gonna go through and organize it, yeah. like start your inventory, your list. Like that's that's probably the most important thing. And then um the the thing too is like um you start getting out of control like buying gear and selecting gear. <clears throat> You want to choose the items you're most likely going to use. Like, we live in an area here that's like flooding's a possibility. Um, I don't know, blizzards, like mm-hmm. things like that. Like, organizing your gear in a way that you're going to be able to access the stuff that you're most likely to, to need sure. in those, like in the location you're in. Organizing it that way so that you can get to the stuff you're going to use most, like, first. Like, don't put your 25-year shelf life stuff in front of everything and then have all of your other stuff. Exactly, so, yeah. it's just an organ, like, organizing your plan before you even start organizing your gear is mm-hmm. kind of what, what I was going off there. Yeah, yeah, makes total sense. And so, like, one of the biggest things, the hardest things is your food and water organization. This, to me, I, I'm not good at it. I don't know why I'm doing this and why I'm saying this information because I'm, I'm the worst at it, but I'm going to try anyways. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... It's one of those preps, it takes up probably the most space out of anything that we have, and it's the one that needs constant attention. Like, with food and with water, you always have to be looking at what you have, you always have to be aware of expiration dates, and you always have to be rotating. So, organization is more key, I think, even in this area than than some of the others that we're going to talk about. And it's the least, ex- it's the least exciting. It is. You're like, Unfortunately. Oh, I'm going to go look through my gear because that's way cooler. Yeah. Um. And then, like Cam said, some people have to consolidate and save space as, space as much as possible. So the more organized you are, the more planned out you are with your food and water, the better off you're going to be, right? And so Cam says, where do you store your stuff? <clears throat> so let's talk about each of these areas. So short-term food supplies. Obviously, keep this in your kitchen most of the time, right? So this is your pantry, your your fridge, and all that stuff. You don't want to keep your 25-year shelf life, everything upstairs. So when you want to make a waffle or some toast, you got to go downstairs, right? <laughs> yeah. It makes no sense. So make sure that you're... you're you're not, you know, your whole fridge isn't 25 year shelf life stuff. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So that's where that stuff is. Then you go to the medium term stuff. This is, you know, canned foods, freezer food, and those kind of things in some pantry food. You want to spread those. You don't want to keep everything in your kitchen. You don't want to keep everything in your basement. Do your best because as Cam mentioned, there could be a flood, there could be a fire, there could be looters whatever it might be and if everything's in one spot that just it's easy pickings for yep. for the flood or the fire or the, or the looters <laughs> so you know you've got your kitchen freezer <clears throat> some sometimes you have a garage or a basement freezer as well or you have basement storage maybe you even have a root cellar so look for that medium term stuff to try and spread that out as much as you can so that again you don't lose everything in in one fail swoop depending on what might happen um, you know, even with short term and medium term, make sure that you're organizing in a way that allows for ti- timely rotation. Freezer meats, I've done this before, oh my gosh. where you just lose a bunch of stuff because you weren't paying attention and you weren't yeah. taking from the oldest stuff and leaving the newest stuff in there. I've done this so many I times. I know the weekend comes around, and you're like, mm-hmm. let's eat some steaks. Yeah. And they're just. A piece of like steak sickles. Frozen. Yeah, it's yeah. disgusting. Yeah, it's all dried out. It's been nasty. there for two years, you yeah. know. So <laughs> it's so important to make sure that you're organizing even in your freezer those things. And if you have to write the date on the outside of those things in big, you know, Sharpie so yeah. that you can look at it and go, I gotta eat it before this date, or I'm not gonna get to eat it. So just make sure that you're organizing even that medium and short term stuff in a way that makes sense. Long-term shelf life foods. These need to be stored in a cool, dry, dark place. And I'm not talking about your wife's heart. I'm talking about the <laughs> basement, probably. Okay. Um, the basements are usually great for this kind of stuff. Garages, as Cam mentioned, if they aren't air conditioned, aren't going to be ideal for storing long-term stuff because you have those wild temperature swings and um, kids' handlebars <laughs> poking through bags. Oh gosh. <laughs> I'd rather that though than my like scratching down my car. Oh, all all my cars is that's why I'm like I'm never buying a new car. Yeah, because <laughs> they're just, just all scratched. Got like dents. Yeah. So, um, and then also sheds. Some people's like, well, I'm just gonna put it in my shed. That's again probably not ideal because for one, security is a little lacking usually on those. Right. And you just watch from your kitchen windows. The, man, yeah. oh, they're not lifting with their back. Oh, those idiots. <laughs> 
Uh, those, are, those are 55 pounds. Don't bags. eat all that at once. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, they're usually not air conditioned either. So, again, you, you for that long term stuff, a basement or a closet or something like that's probably going to be best. Um, and here's where it gets hard too is you can't just throw all that stuff on the ground. You can't just yeah, say, I'm no. going to put it in a corner, pop. Pile it over there, put a blanket over it, and we <laughs> put can a bed sleep on it. On it put Let a bed on it. On. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put a pillow on there. They can have their sleepovers down there. <laughs> no, you gotta you gotta keep that stuff off the ground. Um, it's not optimal to keep things on the ground because you get mice, you get floods. Uh, maybe it's dogs or snakes or babies. You know, down there. Snake apocalypse. Uh, snake a li- uh, baby apocalypse. <laughs> snake lips. <laughs> snake lips. <laughs> uh, that nice snake lips. Yeah, that happens. You know, so. And then many people also worry about chemicals leaching up from the concrete. Yeah. So just you're probably going to have to get shelves of some sort. And you don't want to don't get like those 1980s wicker shelves. <laughs> those don't work. <clears throat> do you remember those things? Yep, I do. My parents had like those wicker shelves that was like a round one on the top, <laughs> and then it also had those big that big chair that had the big round thing on the back. Do you remember <laughs> that big wicker chair everybody had? I swear I, I don't know why they let people smoke near those. <laughs> it was like it's like. Fire tinder. I know. It's beyond dry. And they would always break. Uh, They're man. all frayed. They're all, yeah. like, ready for fire starting. <clears throat> yeah, you touch them, your whole arm's, like, <laughs> inflamed and scratched all the way up and down it. I know. Anyways, yeah, I hate wicker. I hate wicker. It's the worst thing ever. Wicker man, whatever. Um, wicking. Yeah, but you you probably don't want to get the cheap plastic stuff either. You want to get the heavy-duty shelves. This is going to be super optimal because most of this stuff that you're going to be trying to organize and store is not light. You know, it ain't, it ain't light. No. So it's going to be heavy. So you, if you have a shelf collapse on you, you've just lost everything, probably. <laughs> you know, Man dies from storage shelf. <laughs> well, well, I'm not saying necessarily on you, but like, say you've got water and you've got flour, oh, yeah. and now you've got water yeah. and flour mixed on the floor, <laughs> right? Kids, go get some of that dough. We're going to make some dough real we quick. We got to hurry and cook it up. Some roof or some... <laughs> gravy ready to go yeah right bread and gravy yeah um so make sure that you're getting that heavy duty stuff that's not going to collapse it's going to be a nightmare if it does um then you come to stuff like canned food yeah boy that presents a problem sometimes <laughs> don't it <laughs> it just does freaking canned food. yeah um the best thing with canned food is like a rotating rack that you can put stuff yeah. in the top and come The down. ones that kids love to like. Oh, yeah. So they just get all the mm-hmm. dates mixed up because yeah. they're like, whee! Yeah, it's <laughs> super fun. And there's a million of those that you can get. They're pre-made or you can build them yourselves. But this allows you to organize your cans by type and by expiration. And it forces you to rotate before they explode or go bad or whatever yeah. they're going to do. You you can't just grab one in the middle. No. It's like, I like that brand. <laughs> yeah. I don't need no Western family. Give the me only the good thing stuff. that makes me mad with those is I have one of those in our... Holy ho! No! I just spilled. Um, we'll be all right. <laughs> organize. You know, organize your hand good. <laughs> movement. <laughs> That's going to be like a sticky mess by the end of this podcast. I don't know. It's sugar-free. No, it is sugar-free. You're right. It just eats through the table. <laughs> just a big Probably hole. through our stomach lining right now. Might as well. Um, the... Uh, <laughs> That's oh. a first. Oh, yeah. The little organize... The can organizer. That yeah. is a first. Yeah. Um... It, I, you get those like uh, Campbell's, like ready to like the soup, the hearty soup. You're like, oh, yeah. damn, Campbell won't fit in anything. Oh, yeah. Like they're fit, super huh? big. They're I hate just that. Off. Like yeah. all the cans seem like they've got a different size to them. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so that's so, a frustrating thing. So you got to get ones that will fit all the cans that you yeah, use. Yeah, and, and some got the some big fat just, cans yeah. and the little cans. <laughs> you got to have got to have the ones that fit all the cans. Tuna cans. You just got to figure yes. that out. Yes. Oh, shit, this is gonna be a mess. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you're gonna get fired. It's gonna be bad. Um, so uh, where was I at? Rotating racks, right? Um, I'm not great with this, and I've had to throw away a bunch of cans. I actually had to do it this year. I had to throw away a bunch of cans. So, um, we might have to stop this podcast. Oh no, we're good. I'll just push. <laughs> I'll push it off the table. <laughs> I'm gonna have to clean this Squeegee. up afterwards. Yeah. Good hell. That's funny. It's good. Man. That's the first time I've ever had I've ever had that. It's clean. I know. I'm surprised. I yeah, that is surprised. Um okay. It's so, like I'm doing a podcast with my kids right now. <laughs> I'm gonna be so sticky. This is horrible. <laughs> um I smell like this energy drink for two weeks now. How many energy drinks you drinking in a week? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Can't open my hand. <laughs> you know what I mean? Instead like a shoehorn t- hand. 
<laughs> Instead of tobacco stains, is it your fingers are glued together? <laughs> yeah, I had a couple this week. Good lord! Ah, oh, awesome. That's cool. All right, so That's moving fun. on. <laughs> moving on from cans. Twenty-five year shelf life foods. So these come in a lot of different types of packaging. Maybe they're bags. Maybe they're cans, like the number 10 cans, uh, but sometimes they come in buckets, which is awesome. Sometimes they come in totes. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so, the Wise Foods, I have a few mm-hmm. of the bucket ones, which is kind of nice. Right, yeah. And so these are, what I'm talking about is like the dehydrated and the freeze-dried food, right? This is stuff that might be nutrient survival or like Cam said, Wise Foods and those types of things. These to me are usually easier to organize and store because of the shape of of them, right? They're not, they're not... Um, cans and um, they have long shelf life so you can just stick them in the very back and you know they're going to be there for 25 years Um, storing these in buckets and totes should do the trick for most people it's a great way to organize it just make sure that you can clearly see expiration dates on all the packaging and then if not just mark it on the exterior of the bucket or the bag or the tote whatever that is use permanent marker and don't get like those really crappy like label makers that just fall off in uh, a yeah, day. I agree. They're <laughs> because you're well, it's ne- just another task that you have to yeah. do that you're like, I'm not gonna organize this. No. You're like, tick, 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 yeah, tick, it's horrible. I yeah. misspelled. Oh well, put it on there. Mm, never Potatoes. Mind. Those are yeah, those are lilaters. Um <laughs> so just make sure that you're having good stuff that's not gonna fall off because again, you're not gonna remember. When, when the dates are, you're not going to go back no. to it. So just make sure when you do it, do it right. And so we talked about this a little bit, but spreadsheets, another organization for for food, another way to organize it, it was with spreadsheets. I tried this once. I've failed miserably since. Yeah. Uh, but like Cam said, if you start at the very beginning, when you start doing this stuff, the very first time you get some some food in and you, and you put it all into a spreadsheet, that's the way to do it. Start yeah, you at have the very to. beginning. Okay. Um, it helps you really keep on top of things and you can include things in this spreadsheet. Like where is the item located? Like what shelf, what room, the expiration date, the number or quantity of the item that you have, and even maybe the calories. And I did this with mine is I, I put the, the amount of calories on each instead of servings. Cause it is calories, calories is a better way to, um, kind of see how much you have, right? Because the service kids go down there and get us three thousand calories for <laughs> tonight. Three, exactly, a piece. Yes. Um. So this is a great thing to do. It just takes a lot of time. And the problem is, here's the problem that I had. Every time you bring something in or take something out, you have to get back to your spreadsheet yeah. and update it. Yep. I don't have. The I tried to do like a clipboard uh-huh. and have like a spreadsheet. You like mark it. Yes. Yeah. And um, it's still marked. From yeah. 2018. <laughs> yeah, it's like the same thing, right? <laughs> so it's really, really hard to do, but <clears throat> it's absolutely the most effective way to know what you have and know what you need. Um, otherwise, it's just a whole bunch of guesswork. Yeah, and so you just you, keep adding to yeah. big old pantry full exactly. of half expired food. But there's a whole bunch of different um, spreadsheets that you can find online for this, or you can just make your own. It's yeah, obviously, there are. There's some really good ones online. You could do I was looking really simply. So I, I would suggest if you're getting started to start this and keep up with it, because once you let it go, you're in a freaking mess. Yep. Um, a couple of other things with food organization. When you're doing it, try and group similar items together. Get the rice with the rice, the beans with the beans, breakfast with the breakfast, flowers with the flowers, okay? <laughs> it's just going to make things Ramen easier. with all of it. Ramen goes everywhere. It just, yeah. You have right. it with everything. Exactly. So it's just going to make things easier when you go to try and find beans and you have a whole bunch of beans in one spot. You know, your life's going to be a lot easier that way. Um, label everything. Like we said, random freezer bags in your in your freezer. It's some sort of a meat. Is it pork? Is it chicken? Is it dog? We don't know. Put it on there. Um, you know, if it's some sort of a white substance, is it salt, sugar, cocaine? We don't know. <laughs> Never assume. One number 10 can <laughs> yeah. full of just crack. Just straight up crack. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. It's a good barter. It really is. Um, I never assume you're going to remember what it is. Oh yeah. No, you no will way. not. <laughs> no. Absolutely. You're going to have to taste it to figure yeah. it out. You're going to have to be like on a, like a cop from the eighties <laughs> crime show. You know, lick your pinky, <laughs> put it in there. Give it a taste. Or baby get out, powder. <laughs> get out your baby powder. <laughs> or get out your pocket knife and put a little on there. You know, <laughs> yeah. cut a little bit off. You make a taste line it. of it. <laughs> yeah. That's talc. Uh, uh, it's talc. That is almond flour. 
I'm going to be feeling that one for the rest of the night. <laughs> so uh, just label it, all right? <laughs> is there really on the fly? I, I assume there is. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure there is. Mix right? that with the peanut oil. Yeah. Ooh, almond flour and peanut oil? That sounds like That's a, nutty. That's a cookie. That's a cookie right there. Nutty. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I can't beat that. Um... Add shelves to unused spaces. So this is the hard part is you get enough shelves to everything. But if you have a little corner in a pantry or something that doesn't have anything, put put a few shelves in there. Yeah. You know, utilize all the space you can. Keep some tote bags ready to go. Um, this is a great way, in case you got a bug out or something like that, you could throw a bunch of food in a tote bag and head out. This is why I really like the Nutrient Survival, their bug out go bags. Yeah. They are freaking awesome. They're in a dry bag. They're about yay big, and they have 72 hours of food for one person. So you can just grab a few of those, head on out, and you're freaking good, man. You're you're going to be eating well for, for a couple of days. So. Probably more healthy than you would. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You eat a McDonald's or something? <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, and then store in Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers if you can. Don't just put it in a Ziploc bag and say, eh, she's good, right? Instead, use those Mylar bags. You have various sizes. Help you extend your food's shelf life. And it provides, you know, protection against oxygen intrusion, humidity, light exposure, all those types of things. So just a few other things to think about. I'm not great with this stuff. There's a lot more better people than me. The food's tough, about man. This. It's it really is. hard. Now we got to talk about water. Water. Again, water is hard. Um, it's one of the hardest things, and it's one of our most important wet. things. It's wet. It's and wild. And wild. <laughs> it's wet and wild. Wet. Let's talk about a wet and wild of water. <laughs> All right. The problem is it takes up so much space. Tons. It's so hard, and you need so much of it, at least a gallon per person per day. That means if you have five people in your family, you need 70 gallons for two weeks. It's tough, man. That's just a I've drink. I've got two of those blue and he, 55s, and that's only two weeks. Yeah. I'm just like, wow. Mm -hmm. We're dead. Gonna die, probably. Yeah. Yes. This is why it gets really hard, because you're gonna need more for cleaning and everything as well. So how do you store all this water? How do you organize it? I think you're just gonna have to use a whole bunch of different ideas. So let's start with the one most people start with, which is bottled water, right? It's usually the easiest. The first thing people do, they go grab a couple of things about water put in their basement say hey i'm a prepper yeah right that'll get you a day that's nothing wrong with that i think it's great no. i've done this everybody does it i think they're convenient they're usable they're easy you can stack a few of these on a shelf and you can get a couple weeks worth of drinking water if you keep going with it right um but you know these are best to rotate out on a semi-regular basis if possible i mean a lot of people are freakish about the expiration dates on those i'm not i'm not either i'm not Give but, me all the BPA I can Yeah, handle. I mean, I just feel like it's probably extra calories <laughs> in some way, shape, or form, right? Building up some immunity. Yeah. Um, the great thing about these is you can slide them under a bed. You can put them in a closet. Frick, man. <laughs> There's so many places you can put them, <laughs> right? I love bottle water. I love bottle water. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. How about let's talk about gallon jugs? These pieces of shit, <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> You know? It's the truth, too, it's man. It's so bad. they like, got this big old wonky handle. Yeah. You can't stack on them. Who made these? I don't know. What kind of idiot? They should have made them square. They should have. <laughs> it's they like a square jug. Yeah. Right? They you, have some square ones, but they still are. They, just they still go all, they're all funky flimsy. up on the top. Yeah. You can't stack them. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. They. I would avoid them. They're hard to stack, hard to store, tend to yeah. just end I up I have leaking. a couple of them. They leak. Yeah. I have some, too. They I have do. a bunch. It's like you you push them in the back against like the cement yeah. foundation, yeah, like two times. Mm -hmm. It's all pfft, starts leaking out. Yeah, you just go and you you pick one up and it's half full, and you're like, well, <laughs> you know, I don't know why. I've been drinking. Either this. my kids have been down here just gu guzzling water, <laughs> or that thing's I ain't going leaking. upstairs. <laughs> yeah, I got a faucet down here, but I'm yeah. gonna use Dad's <laughs> water this. storage. Take it. I'm drinking out of this 55 gallon barrel. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Want to put a little? It's true. You're like it evaporate. <laughs> yeah, I know they really you find there's a hole in the middle of it. Yeah, it's crazy, man. So, um, you know, I would just try and avoid those gallon jugs because good luck organizing those. Yeah, you know, portable water storage containers. These are the the ones I'm talking about. Are usually those five to ten gallon containers. Yeah, I love these, Cam. Um, you know, depending on Passionate the stock. About them. Yeah, I mean it's something. I hold right here. <laughs> You know, you get dear to my heart. Love. You can easily stack these most of the time. They're portable. That's what I love about them. And they're not just like, you know, a thing, like a, like a gallon jug, right? 
<laughs> Utterly de- delicious water. I store all my milk in a cow. <laughs> I do. Just have Keep it right there. around out back. I can just have her come with me. <laughs> come on, Bessie. She knows to rotate it. Yeah. <laughs> Changing that milk out once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just love these because you could throw them in a truck and you got five to 10 gallons, you know, for yeah. a couple of days. Water bricks are fantastic because they, they stack like nobody's business. Like, they got it going on in They're the stacking like game. adult Legos. They really are, except for they got adult prices on them. They do. They're not cheap. No. So, they're great for organizing and stacking. Horrible for keeping your bank account. <laughs> right. Great. So, think about that. You can treat these if you need. Um, and so, they could basically be last indefinitely. They yeah. can last forever, which is fantastic. Um, you can store these on a shelf in your basement or, you know, in a kitchen, kitchen pantry or even in your vehicle. That's why I love them. The next thing I want to talk about is a water bob or an aquapod. Water bob. Water bob or an aquapod. What I love about this is that it's it's a water storage thing, but it doesn't take up much space right now. So obviously, Just a whole bathtub. Just a whole bathtub, but not yet. That's what I'm saying. This is <laughs> yeah. the great thing is, is you throw these in your bathtub in an emergency, fill them up, like 250 gallons of water like that, bro. And so this is why I love these. For two weeks. Yeah. And you... And you they had it stored away in like a little shoe a box. Little, I, not little even box. Yeah. You could just keep these under the sink in your uh, bathroom or, yeah. or in every bathroom if you want. Yeah. You might want to leave one tub unwater bobbed <laughs> so yeah. you can take a tub if you need to. I've seen pictures of people and they have like 10 water bobs. I'm like, how many bathtubs you have? <laughs> I like, guess. Are you just going to fill a big old water, like a big old pull balloon, it out? balloon just like rolling around yeah. in your I suppose you could. Kids sleep on that. Yeah, it's a water bed. You're going to love this bed. Not a water bob. Um, so, I think everybody, I think every family should have one of these. It makes your water storage a little easier to handle, you know, but if the water goes bad for some reason in your pipes or it suddenly shuts off. Yeah, they're all in a, yeah. You're going to have a, a problem. Earthquake. Yeah. You got some interrupted you, pipes. You can't get anything, you know, but this is great for... Uh, you know an event is coming, and you can just what fill if it terrorists? Up. Yeah, that's true. Put dirt, like dirty water cyanide bomb. right into your water system. What are you gonna do, huh? Exactly. I you don't know. Think that one through. I, I haven't thought it through. <laughs> the, the other one I want to talk about is storage barrels or water tanks. Cam talked about the fifty-five gallon drums. Th- they're fantastic because you can keep fifty-five gallons in them. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. But. They take a lot of space. You're not moving it once And it's you full. cannot move it. Like, like yeah. That's where it lives for the rest of its life. <laughs> yeah. um, we tried to move one in my house. Remember the one we moved in my yeah. house? Me, you, and homie? Yep. That was a mess. They're super hard to move. Yeah. I, I had to move two of them out of when I had my basement finished. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it was, I felt like moving a car into the basement yeah. would have been easier. Probably. So. Depending on the car, for sure. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. Keep these and all other containers off the concrete if possible. Many people are very worried about chemicals leaching up from the concrete. Hey, it's full of fluoride anyway. Yeah, I don't care. I'll let you figure that out. You're going to have to have a hand pump, though, with these because it's hard to just stick a straw in there and (laughs) suck right out of it. And you're done. (laughs) You're Now take a sip. Exactly. How much you been drinking? Um, but the great thing about you can get storage barrel or storage tanks for your garage that you can keep like 250 gallons. Yeah. In. Pretty darn cool. <laughs> I don't know. They are. They're nice too. Like I have, I have a shelf, like I built the shelf basically to go on top of them mm-hmm. because you know, yeah. you can't do anything else with them. <laughs> no, you really can't. But you can store quite a bit. You put yeah. a board across them and just kind of for sure secure that. And you got you stack another one on top. Hell yeah, you ain't lying. <laughs> um, so that's pretty cool. The, a couple other things I want to talk about when it comes to <laughs> water. I love those waters. water storage and organization. Rainwater harvesting. This is something. This is not really organization here, but it's another way to get. I it organize done. my rain. Yeah. Into a barrel. But here, half is half of it is like spring rain. <laughs> half of it is winter uh, snow melt. I clean with this. Yeah. Uh, but Irish that, spring rain. But, but it's another way that you can do it. And the last thing is filters. Obviously, you have to organize those in some way. But that's more of a gear thing, less of a water organization. But, but organize it with your water. You could absolutely. You're not lying. It could be done <laughs> do that what way. You want. Yeah, you can do anything you want. So that's kind of food and water organization and storage. Uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> True. They are. They're the hardest. God, They're not exciting. Such a freaking mess. And um, <laughs> God. so, yeah, 
the next part is like all of your gear. And this is where I'm the most unorganized. My food is a mess, but not nearly as bad as my gear. Mm. My gear is just everywhere. Yeah. And it's a little different for us. You know, we get gear sent to us. So it's like we're constantly getting different gear. And it's like, I go, I want to like a big old like vat that just like sh- like sifts it into like yeah. the right category like the coin machine yeah it's like and i pour all these in there <laughs> yeah <laughs> that would be the, nice sends a tarp over to one side yeah. sends your knives over but yeah um one goes to your wife for presents <laughs> for the neighborhood <laughs> yeah that's exactly that's my biggest bin yeah but yeah um it, you just get a ton of gear and mm. you that's the most exciting thing. That's the typical thing that we buy is like, I want more gear. Mm-hmm. I want better gear. Or, you know, you listen to our podcast and you're like, I'm, I want that. Yeah. And you get it. And it's just hard to keep all this organized. So starting with this, and it may just be chaos like mine was. It's just everywhere. It's yeah. like boxes full of all kinds of craps, like knives, fire starters, um, like first aid. <laughs> It did. It had like splints and tourniquets. I'm like, man, it's all just all over the place. Really, the, the the best way to start with this is just to take it all and just lay it all out. Mm-hmm. And it and it sucks because you're like, it I sucks, don't want to put this all away. But it's also kind of fun sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't know I had that. Look nice. at this gear. This is cool. Yeah. Invite the neighbors in to then look Then your wife's it. like, why do you have all this? <laughs> I know. Can you sell it or something? No. No. Get out of here. Um, Go check on your Jersey Beach whistles. <laughs> <laughs> now your bug out bag's empty. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I like that. yeah, so the, uh, the best way is just to kind of like lay all your stuff out mm. and then starting to, when you start to like organize it, you're going to, you're going to break it down into categories. Like this stuff's my fire starting. This yeah. is my camping. This is my knife. It's like, you've got to make individual categories for each so that you can kind of separate it out. And I usually will go next to like the largest and smallest. Like I start with the large crap that takes up way too much space. Mm-hmm. And another thing is I have a lot of stuff that's still in the box. I do too. And I'm like, that takes up way too much space, but it's so hard to like take it out. I know. Because you're like, maybe I could give that away as a gift. Or, you know, the box is that clearly might, labeled what it's for. That might not um, resonate with people as much. Obviously, you and I, like you said, are in an in a interesting position yeah. with gear because we get so much sent to us every month that we don't open everything. No. like Because because a lot of times we both get the same piece of gear. We're like, well, let's open yours or something this yeah. time. So uh, that might not be as big of an issue, but it is for us. We have a, yeah. I have a ton of stuff that's still in boxes. And it, yeah. So, or you get gifts at Christmas yeah, or something for sure. like that. And it's yeah. like... It's easy to just keep it in that and store it, but it's taking up way, w- a ton of space. So yeah. if you're really hard up for space, you should like unpack all that crap. Um, and then, and then start by categorizing like the smaller, you know, go from large to smaller. And I have, and this was Kobe's, like I saw how he had his organized, like I like those open bins. Mm. Because I hate the little Tupperware drawer ones. Yeah. Like, they snag. Some of those. They get all compressed. Were actually like, Tupperware drawers that I just pulled out. Is that what you did? Some, yeah. I think one of them was. Because I needed one more of those bins. Yeah. So, I'm like, I'm just, it was a big one, obviously. Yeah. So, I pulled it out and just use it as an open bin. Yeah, they just, I don't know. They just don't work very well in those yeah. little, but. Um, so, yeah. Starting with, like, like I separate out, like, the biggest. And then I moved down to the very smallest. And mm-hmm. then and then I kind of moved towards, like, the medium-sized stuff. But with the smallest crap, like I usually, like Harbor Freight has stackable bins, which mm-hmm. makes it really nice. So you just, you know, you have these clear bins so you can see what's in there and then um, try and label it like right on there, you know, knives, yeah. fire starter. And then I just start to sort them out and have them stacked into those individual things. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have too many marked miscellaneous yeah, and then it just turns into a junk bin and it you get like is. 50 of them. I've done my best in mind to keep, like fire starting gear and first aid gear and you know water skill gear yeah and all those things <laughs> yeah. but over just time, a sprinkler head yeah <laughs> mouth appropriate just, mouth size sprinkler yeah head. rain bird instruction manuals <laughs> mostly how much shuck pressure you yeah need. but uh over the just over time stick and a sprinkler head <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's exactly what it is that's your water skill over time they get worse and worse and worse and worse because I just start throwing crap in there. Yeah. I don't go with time right now. Then right. you have to go do it again. Yeah. Ugh. So that's, I mean, that's like how I would organize my uh, small bins. But after like breeding and going through stuff of what would work better, like writing on everything, you know, just black Sharpie is good. But you can, to be even more organized is you can color code things. Sure. 
one, you could use um, like bins that are already like you can get drawers and bins and things that are a certain color. Mm -hmm. And then you're just like, all my yellow is my fire starting stuff. Yeah. All of my red is my medical stuff. Blue, you know, is my filters for water and things like that. That's probably pink one of the is more, my knives. Yeah. Pink is my wife's giveaway items. Yeah. Yeah. Pink's my knife. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can do, that's probably a little more organized so you can quick see, okay, this is red, brr, just throw it in there. Yeah. Um, and duct tape, they, they have all kinds of different colors. Oh, so they do. So if you just have the clear bin, so you can see in there, then you can just get a piece of duct tape, you know, and just use yellow for your fire and blah, 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 blah. So those are different ways you can organize your I bins. guess you would have to have some sort of a, a, a key or a legend that shows what's what. Yeah, you would. Somewhere like on your shelf or something yeah, maybe. Yeah, Or just no. So when you come through the bead mm. curtain. Yeah. Then you just have all you, stuff. you light the incense. <laughs> <laughs> then, okay, right. we're gonna go through sorting. Yeah, <laughs> you just have it all like all of your gear in a big circle with candles burning in the middle. Okay, <laughs> An altar. We're gonna do this. An altar on one side. <laughs> <laughs> You're burning like a battle box box or something to the to the Honey, gear. What are you dogs. doing? Get out of here! I'm organizing gear. What are you crazy <laughs> coming in here right now? <laughs> Just wearing all your gear too. What you're messing up the I'm trying freaking to get this flow stuff down. Yeah, but um, like some of the categories I'd I'd written down. To, you've got your emergency lighting, your communications, batteries, <laughs> just, medical supplies. I could see you in your basement. An altar, oh, man. <laughs> an altar on one side, like burnt <laughs> offerings to the gear, like the backpack gods. <laughs> yeah. You know, just wearing the backpack front and back. So you're stacking <laughs> it, like put sorting it out. Yeah. Putting stuff in front and the back. <laughs> With your eyes closed. That's the thing, you know? <laughs> this is goes in this bin. Yeah, yeah if you can't... Do it up by feel. If you can't... Sense if it. If you don't know yeah. where your, like, emergency lights and batteries mm -hmm. are with your eyes closed, yeah. you got to re you gotta start all over. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. It's a, you do it by feel. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, so, I mean, you got your fire starting, you got your protective clothing, camping supplies, and I usually have, um, like, the camping supplies in those bins, like, more to the front, mm -hmm. especially the lighting, you know, all my flashlights, they're yeah. all like where you're going to, you know, if you're going down there blind, like I was saying, <laughs> you're like, it's dark. You, you want your at. bin like right up front. Yeah, for sure. And obviously with that, I keep those in several different places. Like I have lights next to my bed. Yeah. I have lights in the laundry room and, you know, flashlights and, right. and things right. like that. And then a bunch downstairs. Yeah. Just because, and that's the thing. Like once this it. is all organized, then you can start putting those kits together way quicker. Exactly. It's like boom, 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 yeah. and put it under your kid's bed. Yeah, stuff like that. So, um, and then the last and most important rule of all mm -hmm. is to make it all inaccessible to your children. Yeah, they need to know where it's at. Mm -hmm. Anything that's go in it. there, but they'll lose a finger. Like mm -hmm. you will chop a finger off yep. if they go in there and start messing with. Every stuff. turn time on your flashlights. They go in, they lose a finger. <laughs> yeah. It's not just once. <laughs> But seriously, like my, my, like I put my stuff up high enough that most of my kids can't get to. Yeah. And they're like the shelves that are flimsy. If you try to stand on them, they're still, everything's going to collapse. Yeah. 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 Booby trap it. Don't get the wicker shelves. I no, told you that. No. Don't do it. <laughs> but like, um, that's the thing with those like storage shelves though. Just a little annoyance mm -hmm. is like, you know, they have the wood paneling mm -hmm. on each shelf. Yeah. The little, like the shelf. Like the the front like edge, yeah, it's so flimsy. It is. So it's like you put one thing, it's like and opens. And That's why the all metal shelves are much better. Yeah, if you can get the all metal ones, that that is better. You talking about the ones that are like graded? Like, yeah, or you know the stuff. Yeah, straight metal. Obviously, I have the same ones that you're talking about that are metal framed. They're, they're, they're nice looking, and they have and like the, the particle board yep. or the whatever stuff in. Yeah, it is. It's like particle board. Yeah, and, and then they, it and just they starts bow. bowing. Yeah, they you're bow. like, what's going on here? Yeah, and then the stuff like comes out, and then your shelf goes right through. And I put totes on some, and when you're yeah. pulling the tote out, it like bends that. Yeah. And, uh, you got to be careful. You really so, do. Yeah, you gotta you gotta invest some money in some mm -hmm. good shelving. You really do. So this one is a little bit. This is an interesting topic, but to-do list for preppers. I think staying organized as a prepper means... This is full-on part of yeah, organizing. I think so, too. You've got to have that to-do list, and you've got to understand the best way to organize that list, right? I've had one of these forever, and I do it a certain way, but um, your to-do list can kind of seem endless, and there's almost you almost feel like you never get through it. Um, so I think having really good organization on this is key to being super prepared and to being a good prepper. So make a prepper to-do list and keep it organized. I think it's key. Here are a few tips. When you're making this list, rank your preps. This is basically what I'm talking about is a, a risk assessment. Yeah. 
basically. Yeah. Rank your preps and to-do items by difficulty and importance. So the ones that are the e- this is the way I like to look at it. If it's super easy and it's super cheap and it's actually pretty high in importance, put that to the top of your list. Get things done that are um, going to be easy for you, that are going to be cheap, and that are closer um, to the top of importance. Yeah, you know, it, it, if it's harder, but maybe it's less important. Like it's something that's gonna you know, in a freaking volcano or something. Well, I'm, you know, I don't know exactly what it is, right. but that comes down to the end of your list. Yeah. You know, when you've got this other stuff done. Um, doing Easy, it this quick, way. takes the least amount of time, you're yeah, done. Exactly. This helps you get more prepared faster. And it also um, gets you more prepared for likely crises that you're going to face. This is why this risk assessment is so um, good. But also, in times, in different times, that list might get adjusted right now. You're probably more worried about supply chains. You're maybe worried about World War III or maybe a nuclear event. Yeah. So your your list needs to adjust as those things are happening. Um, and so it's like time of year too. Oh, absolutely. Yes. It's like your hydration importance mm-hmm. is going to change. Mm-hmm. Like the middle of winter, I'm not as worried about it. Exactly. And maybe if you already have a prep that can double as um, something else that maybe you don't need, then you can pull something out of that list and adjust it there. So how do you make this list? This is the way I do it. I just have a note that use the notes app on my iPhone and I have a list there and I'm constantly updating it. Yeah. All the time I'm like looking at stuff, maybe I'm listening to a podcast or I'm looking at a YouTube video or I'm scrolling through something on social media and I see something like, oh crap, I haven't done that. I need that. So I'll just add it to my list or, ooh, this this thing's happening right now. I need to do this. You know, um, so I'm always updating that list on my phone. There's a million different ways to do it. This is the way that I like to do it. And then to make sure that I get it done, if it's something that sort of has a time frame that I'm like, I need to have this done by this point, I will put it on my calendar and have a, a a calendar alert alert me because otherwise yeah you, yeah like you a forget double it. backup mm-hmm. and and then or your notifications you're just always yes, constantly yeah, getting exactly rid of. and so when I have that alert sometimes uh, it's not always I'm like I'm gonna do that Saturday so I'm gonna put it on my calendar sometimes Saturday doesn't work like you want it to right there's so much crap going Ever. on so then I just push it to the next Saturday or the next Wednesday or whatever yeah but I keep it on my calendar until I get it done then I can pull it off. For me, it's just a really good way to make sure that I get those things done and I get the most important things done that need. It's just a great way to keep organized. It is. Right. And on that Mm -hmm. note, like, and I've made this mistake. I've had apps that I'm like, this is a really nice organized, Mm -hmm. organized app. And it's gone when I change phones or reinstall. It's not cloud sync. Like, that's why I'm like, use the default stuff. Like, the default apps, even if you don't like them, get used to them. Yeah. They sync very well. You know, there's like, I think there's a reminders app too. I don't really use that one. No, I actually use the reminders one quite a bit. Do you? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, that could be great too. Just because it's, yeah, just because it. It brings up the big red like um, the stuff that needs dot in the corner. Okay, it's always it drives me nuts because it's on my home oh, screen. Okay, so I only do that just to drive myself. So back. does that? Do you use that? Is it like time based? Like it reminds you at it a certain does, time or okay. location or, or location. like that's what's pretty cool about that. Interesting. That's that's Apple anyway. Okay, yeah. So I use whatever works for you, but have a list of some sort and have a way to get through that list in a timely manner. Yeah. Otherwise. It's just a bunch of random crap that you're going to try and do at some point in your life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways, that's your kind of your to-do list as a prepper. I like it. That is really good. Because mm-hmm. you don't really think too much about like no. to-do and organization, but it is. It really is. It helps yeah. keep you way more organized. Yeah. So, you know, this time of year, <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> all the time, especially yeah. with Russia controlling the whole <laughs> earth. The, yeah, right now, cybercrime is a huge problem. Yes. And we need to be aware of it. And mm-hmm. it's a huge thing for preppers. Like, honestly, it gets overlooked. And we are all under the risk of a really bad cyber crime against us. Yeah. But we can protect ourselves. And we can do that by using Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN that can protect you and all your devices. One subscription will allow you to put it on all your devices, which is super nice. And you can basically go gray man online. You want to shop in some weird places? You want to look at some weird websites? I would use Surfshark because yeah. your IP is cloaked. It's connected to a server in, you know, Afghanistan. <laughs> so Ghana. You got they've got servers all around the world, and you can choose that server. And when you connect to it, you're basically safe. 
if you get disconnected from their server, it'll kill your internet. So you can't, you're, you're not able to surf anymore. So it's super smart. It's super easy to use and it's the most affordable one. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. you need to get it. Go to their website, which is surfshark.deals slash casual preppers. You can even try it for 30 days for free. Get your money back if you don't feel like it's useful to you. There's 24-7 support. It'll even There's even parts of it that'll email you if your email's compromised, which yeah. happens every other day. Pretty much. So get Surfshark. It's totally worth it. It's like 60 bucks a month. It's it's just a little less than 60 bucks a month for 27 months. Yeah. Let's say 67 bucks a month. 67 bucks will give, oh my gosh, $60, <laughs> just a little less than that, gives you 27 months of protection. Ooh. Like, you cannot beat this. And I love it. Like, I use it when I go to airports, when I go to public, wireless, you know, the library. I'll put it on old Surfshark. Nobody's going to get to my phone. Absolutely. Nobody's going to steal my to-do list. Nuh-uh. <laughs> so, um, organizing for apartments and small spaces. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people probably live in these, or they live in the city, work in the city. You're not going to get a lot of space. You're not going to have a basement. No. You're not going to store it down in the parking garage. You, maybe you can. Maybe but, you can. Yeah. So, um, it gets trickier and, and we've done an episode on this Mm -hmm. where we've talked specifically about ways that you can organize and store in these really tight, you know, living locations. Um, here's a couple of things you can do. Invest in like a taller bed frame or blocks or something so that you can lift and store more under your bed. Mm -hmm. And they make these really cool totes. I don't know if you've ever used them. They're flat, but long. Yeah. So you can seal them and you can mark on them. And they stack on each other really well. If you can get them under your bed, you know, so that when you've you're got walking, to use all that space, when you're especially. walking to get in bed and you stub your toe on it, you'll be so grateful you, you have it under be. there. You'll feel good. But I have, I have one of those longer, like really like low profile ones mm-hmm. that has all my, uh, blackout stuff in there. Oh, nice. Flashlight. I even have, um, I even have like, uh, those fire, fireproof gloves and a fireproof, like a, oh, yeah. a little mask. mask. Like yeah. I have all that in my blackout kit just cause it's like right there. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is you can, uh, is you can get some blocks and stuff to lift up your, your, uh, your couches and stuff like that. Just so you can slide a little bit more underneath there. Yeah. It can look a little cluttery. It's going to look pretty weird, but that's the only way that you're going to be able to store and have these supplies in these, um, apartments. Just build like those, um, theater, uh, seating in your, in your living room. <laughs> I, we <laughs> did that in college. Yeah. People do that all the time. <laughs> it's like, I, we got like a table, put, mm-hmm. a, put a couch on it and then yeah. we had the lower couch. So uh-huh. it's like, you had all this stuff underneath and mm-hmm. then you had this pretty sweet looking terrible. But you could just say, I'm just going for a theater yeah. setup. I don't want people sitting behind me. But it's not all beans seeing under them. there. <laughs> yeah. It's all beans. But you can. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, like, you want to utilize all the back sides of the door space. Like, yeah. if you have closets, you know, um, you should have closets unless you really don't have space. <laughs> so, yeah. But, like, under the stairs is usually a big closet there. And yeah. those, like, behind the door organizers, they can be super nice. Like, oh, yeah. I've had those shoe ones, mm. and I've just filled it full of, like, different kind of gear. We have one of those shoe ones in our pantry. And oh, so yeah. And so we put, like, granola bars yeah, and crap no, in there. See, it's like... Yeah. The shoes are a waste. You don't need all that. You don't need shoes. You don't need many shoes. Oh, damn shoes. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and then again, ditch packaging because yeah. you don't have enough space. So you want to cut down on all that. Like, what was the one I saw the other day? The uh, I have a uh, Kelly kettle. Yeah. And it's in a massive box. Oh, it is. Yeah. But when you take it out of that box, it's, you can't stack anything on it. But um, but it does. It takes up a lot of space. So mm. you want to try and, you know, get rid of the packaging stick things nice and tight in a, you know, mm. maybe a, nice a tote tight. or something like yeah. that. If you really want to get crazy, yeah. there's those ceiling hammocks. Oh, yeah. You can look like Maverick gas station. Yeah. Just have stuff hanging up in the <laughs> corner do, like a yeah. snowboarder. <laughs> yeah. But no, they have those um, that, like a lot of soft, if you're if you're collecting all kinds of stuffed animals, Cabbage Patch Kids, mm. stuff like that, yeah. you don't want to get care one of those bears. hammocks. Whatnot. Yeah, Care Bears. You can get one of those hammocks and you just throw all that stuff up yeah. on there. Yeah. But I've thought about getting some of these. You keep your kids up there sometimes. Yeah, right. That's where they're going to want to go. Yeah. Once you hook it up there. Can I get up there? But the nice thing is you can just keep, they can't get out. No. They stay there. <laughs> for a long- skeleton in there? It'll look <laughs> well, like. I mean, you got you to pull them out at some point. Um, it's good babysitter. If you ever watch Goonies. Yeah. You know, when they get in the in the ship, there's all the stuff yeah, like up hoisted there. up. For sure. You want to build that same setup in your home. Yeah. Screenshot um, that stuff. But those ceiling hammocks, I've actually wanted to 
put one in my basement because like it has kind of higher ceilings down there Mm -hmm. and there's like all like going from floor up it's like you get all you get pretty sketchy on shelves and stuff up that high so i've wanted to do like a like one of those i'll I'll let you know how it goes you built a little like a loft space in your garage i did yeah i just basically put a whole nother floor yeah It, it gave me a ton of space yeah but yeah, high ceilings, yeah, they look nice, the architecture, but you can literally use all of that open space with mm-hmm. different, like... They're fun to paint. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Lowe's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, my uh, wife's put, yeah, crazy. She <laughs> wanted to change things up. Yeah. Ruined our lives for the past two weeks. Pretty much. But um, the, uh, like Lowe's has those ones that mount to like the, the beams, the, the upper mm-hmm. floor beams, so that you just have like a... Yeah. It's not really a hammock. It's actually a shelf that's mounted to the floor beams on the upper floor. Sure. Anyways, all this stuff. Lots of good stuff. You're not going to be doing that in the apartment. <laughs> no, probably not in an apartment. But. but like, so in the apartment, yeah, you want to utilize all the behind the door space. You want to, you know, get shelves, even in like your closets and stuff. There's there's a ton of room in there that you could use. Mm-hmm. I, I had a lot of like 72-hour stuff on my top, like shelf in our, in the apartment that we were in. Yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, you, you got to, you got to be really organized in those you small do. apartment spaces if you're yeah. going to store food and stuff. So even on like the tops of the cupboards, I don't, you probably already said that. Oh yeah. Sometimes you'll find space up there in like in the backs and the corners of those cupboards. Yeah. Sometimes it's just empty space. The kitchen has probably yeah. the most empty space. It does. Like it's crazy. We, I, I think when we moved from one of our apartments, I was like pulling our stuff out and I pulled out this like huge griddle and I'm like, this isn't even ours. How did this get this in? It's been in there. It came from the neighbors There's somehow. like a hand, like a skeleton <laughs> yeah. arm on it. Exactly. But yeah, no, all that space you gotta, you gotta organize. Yeah. You can organize a lot better if you, if you like capitalize on all that mm-hmm. open space. For sure. The next place we wanted to talk about is your vehicle. So as a prepper, your vehicle is kind of almost like a little second home base. Totally is. It totally is, right? It's going to be used to bug out and a lot of people... They spend a ton of time in their vehicle, it, it, depending on what it's what their um, job is like and in, in their their drive to work and back every day. You're going to be in there a long time, and it's a great place to keep gear, and it's a great place to keep preps because, for one thing, it's mobile. That's great. You can just hop in and go wherever you want. Also, it's not your house, and it's uh, it's another place to store some stuff in case there is a, a localized disaster just in your home and yeah. you've lost all this stuff. At least you have something in your vehicle. The hard part is you don't want to look like you're the crazy van lady, right? So like 90, it's like 90% filled up with like popcorn bags and manila folders and Diet (laughs) Coke cans and porcelain dolls or whatever the hell that's in there. It's like scary, right? It looks like a science experiment. You don't want to look like that. So you have to be organized as you're doing this uh, because you have to know where the gear is. You have to be able to use it when you need it and you have to be able to maximize that space. So a few things to think about. So if you have a truck, Obviously, you can utilize the bed. It, it, it's hard because you got to do something to it. You can't just leave stuff, be, a bag of beans in the back of the truck. Yeah. yeah that's not going to go over great. So you've got to get something maybe like a bed cover or a camper shell or even um, a toolbox yeah. for, for the back of the truck, right? All of these can really help you maximize the space and allows you to keep Just your, get a vet thing to go in the back yeah, of your... Yeah, that works too, yeah. <laughs> Is that the vet? No, he's a no, prepper. He's just a just prepper. He's a bunch of drawers. Yeah. It helps you keep your your gear safe, secure, out of the elements. They even have products like Decked. I don't know if you've ever seen Decked. Uh, it's truck bed organizers, and sometimes it just keeps... It just uses like half of your bed. Don't so get Decked. Don't get Decked. It's all, it gets you all dicked, dicked, <laughs> but it has, uh, drawers and, and compartments and things that all can lock. Oh, nice. So those, those are kind of cool. Obviously you can use totes, but security can be an issue. So you're going to have to make sure you have something to lock those up. But, um, the next thing you need to do is utilize behind the back seats, you know, and if you don't have back seats behind the front seats, right? Like your truck, um, you got to maximize that space. You can use products like the Gray Man Tactical Back Seat Organizer. Basically, it's like a rigid Molly panel. Yeah. It mounts behind That's, your seat. I love them. Cam and I both have them in our trucks. Velcro, I have it. all kinds of stuff. Too. You really can. You can attach gear for quick access, um, easy access, things like firearms, first aid kits, fire extinguishers, knives. All that stuff can be really easily obtainable and easy to get to that's the hard thing is when you start throwing stuff behind the seat oh yeah you can't find what you need right yeah and you can get things that are similar like the tactical seat organizers where it's just um 
it's like molly panels and stuff, but they're not rigid, you yeah. know, and then you put different pouches and things like that on there. But those are great too, because you can keep a whole bunch of stuff and you know where it's at. Um, then you go to a car or an SUV, you're going to utilize that trunk space, right? You've got to, um, there's a lot of space here. So you've got to, you've got to make the most of it. This is great for first aid kits and get home bags and EDC kits or even bug out bags. Um, you can, you can really put a ton of extra clothing and tools and things in yeah. there. You've got to, right. You've got to do that. And then you can utilize under the seat space. Sometimes there's not a lot, but you can always get some extra water or first aid kit or even a hoodie or something under there, some socks, utilize that space. Yeah. Cause it's there and there's nothing under there. So you might as well use it. They also make collapsible trunk organizers. Yeah, I like those. That's yeah, for sure. Those are super useful. Yeah. If you're not, if you don't have stuff in them, you collapse them and you can put they just up sit flat. Like, yeah, exactly. Really nice. Cam likes to shove water pouches in every orifice of his. Car. I really do. Yeah, he's like even in our in our pilot. Like uh -huh. if you, so it's got like kind of a deeper um, part in the trunk. Uh -huh. You lift that up, then you lift up even further. Then yeah. you get into the spare tire area. Yep. There's like all that space. There around, is like around that tire. I've got water and toilet paper in my spare tire. Spot. Yeah. There's a ton of space. You might there. as well use it, right? You don't see it. It doesn't get in the way. And yeah. it's, it's there. It, in that case, like I said, you got to keep it organized. I actually just get rid of the spare tire. Oh, I haven't had a spare tire in years. <laughs> just have flour and ramen noodles in there. Exactly. It's all mac and cheese and Coke. It's all it is underneath there. It's just a bag of Coke. Like, I'm going to mix my own pop. <laughs> exactly. Um, CO2 bottle down there. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. You can also, I mean, use all the space. Like visor organizers. Oh, yeah. You can get a ton of stuff oh, up there, gosh. man. We know, yeah. We all know plenty of people that have maximized oh, those. Yeah, for sure. You got like a vehicle escape it's tools. Like, it looks like they're looking through a tank because <laughs> yeah, their see visors so packed. <laughs> exactly. Like, and then their dash is full. Yeah. Like my uncle's that way. Yeah. He just comes driving in. There's like paper. He's an electrician. Yeah. It's just oh, yeah. like, it's like 16 different <laughs> like uh, clipboards. Yeah. And then there's like for this sure. visor thing that's like bowing down Rolls into a wire his vision. In the console. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. That's what I'm seeing. If you he rolled over, that. it would look like there's 60 car oh, pileup. Yeah. It's like, where's all these parts coming from? It came from that one truck. Did he drive through a, a house? <laughs> yeah. Came from that one truck. He had all that in his cab. <laughs> yeah. 90% of that was on his visor. <laughs> Crazy. But that's the thing. You want to avoid that. Like you want to do this in an organized way. That's why I say get a visor organizer where you can put your sunglasses, maybe your map, your vehicle escape tool. Yeah. Stuff up there that's useful when you need it, right? And then you've got the glove box. Again, oh my gosh. organize that sucker. If you ever got pulled over and you start to panic because you can't find anything yeah. you need, it's horrible. If it takes you five to six tries to shut that, <laughs> it's not, then yeah, you're not you doing need to it right. organize it. <laughs> you're not doing it right. I can't tell you how many times I pulled out like the registration. It's got this big hole in it oh, yeah. from the thing smashing. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, well. Part of your registration's in the clip for the thing <laughs> when you shove it. <laughs> oh, crap. Every but, time. But they actually make special... like holders for your car insurance and your registration oh, so you keep it in there and then you rotate the new car insurance my wife's horrible with the car oh insurance. i've got like two 1993 oh, yeah. like sticker different for different cars <laughs> for different people like, i don't even know who the name is on it <laughs> you know john williams <laughs> yeah it's like registered the car in 1991 yeah, yeah it's a 1984 chrysler lebaron i'm like i've never had that car i don't even know why that's there <laughs> <laughs> the Baron. Yeah. Yeah. So or you unzip the manual and there's like credit cards in there. Like, oh yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. These aren't ours. For sure. So use just keep it organized in there. Use something like the insurance and registration organizer. I'm gonna look for one because I, I have a hard too. time with that I stuff. Hate that. Then you have your middle console in your vehicle, your truck or your car. This is perfect for those small EDC pouches. I love them. Like I have one in each of my cars because I can I can get a flashlight and a knife and a bunch of different stuff in there and it's all organized and I can just open it up and it's not just like in there everywhere. Right. Right. You know, stuck to the Sprite yeah, on the bottom, <laughs> you know? So, um, so you get those EDC pouches, but it's also a great place for, you know, first aid kits and things like that in there. Just don't throw it in there. Use pouches, keep, keep stuff in line, keep stuff organized. Um, and then in your trunk, you can also use totes and things like that in your storage area for an SUV. Mm -hmm. You can use totes back there. There's no law against it. You can do it. <laughs> Full on. Full on. And then the last thing I want to talk about with vehicles is exterior racks. Racks on racks on racks. Ah, yeah. You can get a million different types. I of love a good rack. Yeah, exterior racks to mount 
you know, jerry cans and shovels and jacks and all the cool stuff. Yeah. Really. I've wanted those racks on there. Yeah. Because you just like, you look like a bad A. You do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not very gray, man. No. For sure. No. But <laughs> it, it does like work. gas cans all down the yeah. like, left side. Uh huh. Yeah, you got like 50 cow mounted up there or something. <laughs> no, I mean, those are great because you can get a lot of that's stuff. That's a spotting scope. <laughs> that's a spot, yeah. That, it looks that's a not funny. A gun. That's not a gun. And then you need roof racks with those huge storage, like those Thule, you know, yeah. storage bins. You can get a lot of stuff in those. So mm-hmm. just think about organizing your vehicle in a way that helps you as a prepper and keep it helps you keep a lot more gear. Yeah. You know? No, it's a great idea. Vehicles. Like vehicles, probably the most unorganized thing in everybody. For family. sure, yeah. Um, some. Digital assets and information and books. You know, you've got to organize this stuff. We, we've we talked about this on multiple different episodes. Yeah. Of like getting all of your documents and stuff in, in an obvious, like quick, easy, accessible oh, I place. I do this so bad. I keep thinking I my just, wife's going to help me. Well, with this job change, I searched for like two hours to find my stupid little social security card oh yeah i'm like why did i not and it was it was in one of those big books but it was slid in like a sleeve and it was in between two pages Mm -hmm. like you'll never see it yeah i mean you will it was it it was in one place which we we knew but i you can't if it's not like nicely organized then you're you're just gonna waste a lot of time um and a good thing an easy thing to do is like take your credit cards and like whatever you carry in your wallet or your purse and scan it mm-hmm. and then have that hard copy with yeah. it like front and back of your cards that that has saved my butt so many times it's like you either get scratched off or you lose a card and you got to immediately hurry and find mm-hmm. you know a way to cancel that card um but that's an easy way to organize it um you could use you know there's filing cabinets and things like that that you can put down in your storage area that's where we have ours that has like our insurance in one folder has our titles in one folder it has mm-hmm. like and we're working on that. It's still a big mess, but yeah, um, you've got to organize that stuff. Like none of that's n- none of your loan repayments and your insurance stuff is likely to go away <laughs> in an apocalypse. Like nah. it's going to take a lot, yeah, for the bank to say you're forgiven because we're all going through a hard time right now. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. No. Um, and then insurance on your on your home, you know, mm-hmm. catastrophe that's going to like level your home or flood and stuff like that. You got to have that stuff in a safe place so that. You know, the bank's not going to always, or, the, you know, your insurance provider probably not going to have it. Well, you lost it. You lost your insurance. We don't even have proof that you had a yeah, house. Yeah, that's, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> you have a picture can, of your house? <laughs> yeah. I, don't I didn't even, know, even you, know you had a home. Yeah. I don't know. I thought you lived out in the woods. You could be yanking our chain. Yeah. And then make, uh, you've got the hard copies, you know, you scanned it, you got printed, put mm-hmm. it in a book. That stuff can get destroyed. So making digital backups, you know, I know like gray man, mm. you know, people freak out about stuff like this, but we live in a good time that you have encrypted stuff that you can store online. Sure. And we live another- in a material world <laughs> and I am a material girl. <laughs> That's true. Okay. And then also having backup hard drives, not yeah. in that same location, like mm. take one, put it in your vehicle, take one to work, you know. Take one to your grandma's house. Yeah. Put it in your grandma's house. Take Leave it to church. one in the bathroom stall at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No one's going to look there. No one is going to. You put it behind that toilet and yeah. no one's going around. No that. one's cleaning They that. don't even clean it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's going to be there forever. Yep. Gas station. Yep. Gas station. Put it in the back tank. It's going to yeah. stay in there forever. Yeah. I like that. But um, yeah. So th- just backing up all that stuff in every way, that's a huge part of your organ, you know, of mm-hmm. organizing things is to keep all of your like, you know, your licenses and stuff, identification, all that in a nice organized place. I like it. And back it up. Back, back it up, girl. Back that ass up. <laughs> um, just a few other things before we finish this. Storage cubes are I know great. you want more. I know. Calm it down, everybody. <laughs> Pull your pants back up. Okay. Um, storage cubes are great because you can store stuff in them, and they're cube-based, you know. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Like Cam said, under the, come up with that. under the bed storage sliders, those things are awesome. Get one. Okay, those are really going to help you keep you organized. Pegboards, I freaking love pegboards. Yeah, they're great in garages. They're great in basements. Uh, you can even put them in your bathroom if you want. Who oh, knows? Yeah. I mean, oh yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my oh, clothes yeah. are hanging on a pegboard. Toilet paper on each peg. <laughs> I just love it. Looks great too. <laughs> Looks great. Yeah. Too. Found it on Etsy. Yep. Um, totes are your best friend. They're freaking useful. Label it. You're gonna Tote. hate yourself later. Totes and goats. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, totes are totes. Yeah. Totes good. Applications for your phone. Apps. Okay. There are a lot of them that can help you organize. There are some that are very specific for preppers that you can look into. One of those is called Prepper Colony. Another one is Inventory Wolf. Another one is Home Food Storage. These are games. These are, uh, yes. (laughs) Whoops. I thought these were... (laughs) <laughs> no, these are actually really <laughs> Pepper Colony. Totally sounds it does like, a sound game. like a game, doesn't it? Um, these are actually great. I mean, a lot Five of dollars get... put in casual preppers, yeah. you'll get six hundred gems. <laughs> <laughs> you can make a Pepper Colony. You can invite your friends to play um, on Facebook. Yeah, but those are great for inventory for preppers. A lot of people don't want to use apps. I get it, but they are an option if you want to do it. Yeah, we we did talk about this a little bit, but. Make your prepper storage off limits for everyday use. Okay. <laughs> this is key to be keeping it organized. And it's also key to not get you in a bad spot when you're siphoning food and water and gear all the time and then you actually need it. Yep. It's not good. The pandemic was an eye opener. Sure. For this. Yeah. It's like we've been using our toilet paper out of the box, mm-hmm. bought a big old bulky thing of mm-hmm. it. We had like four rolls left. Yeah. And it was like crap, right? It was the toilet paper crisis of 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Was it 19 or 20? Rest in peace. (laughs) Um. My butthole will never be the same. (laughs) Yeah. But just, I don't know. Unless it's this, the food that you have to rotate, right? If it's like medium and short term food, but. You know, toilet paper and all those things. I do. My wife likes I like the, fresh toilet paper. I love fresh toilet paper. Six months, no it. older. <laughs> I get it. But you you have to be very organized in a way that you replace it if you use it. Rotate, yeah. Rotate. Other, yeah. You over rotate. Usually you just get using it all up. You over rotate. <laughs> no shit. Name that movie. You probably don't know that one. I don't know. That's from Rad. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's trying to do he's flipping. Flip. Yeah, that's right. You over-rotated. No shit. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's such a good movie. I haven't watched in a that's long a time. Uh, also, consider how you organize your kits. This is another uh, part of prepper organization. Your bug-out bag, your get-home bag, your EDC kits. That's a whole nother thing yeah, we can we go We didn't into. even mention that, but that's no. a perfect place to organize your gear. It really is. Get it in those kits. <laughs> get it in those kits, but also organize those kits in a way that makes sense. Yeah. So there's, there's so much to organization. Oh, right. There's a lot. Yeah, and that, like, mentioning, like, the fact itself. Like, mm, yeah. I can't stand ones that are just, mm. you open it up, and just Band-Aids and gauze, yeah. and it's, like, all pops out. Like, yeah. you're you not going to get anything squirted done. squirted in the face with Neosporin as soon as you open the zipper. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's bleeding out while you're trying to look yeah. for a Not great, not great. So that's it. That's prepper organization. Um, that's just bar- barely scratching the surface, but it gives you some ideas. Next on. week, we'll have part two. Yeah. Following week, part three. There's a whole series. I know you guys want this. Next six months is a whole series. <laughs> this might split off into a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah. You know, we had to bugging out. Now we're going to do too busy. prepper organization. Uh, yeah. uh, guys, today's podcast is brought to you by Tack Pack, the only monthly tactical subscription box with useful professional grade stuff inside. Use our code casual preppers. Get a free separate bag set of EDC gear along with your first month's Tack Pack. Head to tackpack.com. Use our code casual preppers. It's time for the quick and dirty medical tip. Mm. Yeah, one one subscription, like the first box you get from Tack Pack, it's going to pay it back. Oh, it's so crazy. Pay it back with Tech Pack. <laughs> yeah. Dang, they're going to make a new model. <laughs> so quick and dirty, super quick. Mm-hmm. Um, we've talked about it before, but those bloody noses, and uh, I deal with them a lot now. You do. At don't work. You? I, yeah. used to, I used to get them all the time. I haven't had any for like a year. Yeah. I don't know what happened. What'd you do? I fixed it. Yeah. <laughs> I fixed it So with my brain. Here's the biggest thing on um, bloody noses is mm-hmm. people come in all the time. They're like, I need to cauterize. It's mm-hmm. driving me nuts. But they haven't done any of the proper things beforehand. And uh, these are the things that you can do beforehand. Okay. Number one, um, if you have a bloody nose and you finally get it under control with pressure or whatever, don't blow your nose for two weeks. That's it. Two weeks? Yeah. That sounds ridiculous, but just, you know, dab. Or a little light snorting. But don't <laughs> blow your freaking nose. Light snorting. And I don't mean crack. But what? Like, you know, you get like stuff stuck. I know. You just got to deal with it. You just got to deal with it. Uh, it really does heal so I do much that. better if you don't blow your I nose. I do it all the time. Everybody does. Because you get like you blood gunk clots up there and, crap. and you're like, and yep. it's like a whole. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the the number one thing. And then your nose starts to bleed reoccurring. Yeah. yeah. So super hard, but I'm, I'm just saying like when you don't have a clinic to go to or yeah. you're out, like. Try not to blow your nose for two weeks. Okay. Yeah, it's going to get gunky and annoying, but um, it will help a ton with the bloody noses. Okay. In the event you have a bloody nose, um, one of the best things is to have Afrin and gauze. You soak the gauze in Afrin and you, you put it up 
in your nose and it's a vasoconstrictor. So mm. you're shrinking all those blood vessels, controlling the bleeding better. And you leave it up in there for like 15, 20 minutes. Okay. And we take it out. Yeah. And if you don't bleed, you cake it with Vaseline or, um, Bacitracin. Hopefully like Mu is the best. That's prescription though. Huh. But like, that's it. I mean, it, it sounds, it sounds like it should be more complicated, but people like they tend to come in all the time wanting, cauterization and yeah. stuff like that and really they just haven't gone through any of the steps they yeah, haven't yeah. tried the vaseline they haven't tried to keep their nose moist they haven't avoided blowing their nose and and a really easy at home control mm. is to use the gauze and the afrin you stuff it up in there i don't have to get some of that afrin yeah it's crazy how well it works i mean yeah. you can use it on other wounds just because it's a vasoconstrictor but most of the time yeah you stuff it up in your nose leave it in the gauze there and it's going to help blood hmm. clotting. Anyways, those are just simple things that like yeah. people don't tend to do and they come into the specialist and they're just like, mm, guess what? So I've had, this is probably, you're going to, I don't know what to and say about And most of the this. time those lesions form on the septum. Like, okay. you know, when you right put there. your finger and nose on yeah. the inner side, that's where all the blood vessels are. So so I've had them before where it's like in the back. Yeah, the Have post. you ever had like post, uh, yeah, posterior? Yeah, the posterior bleeds. Bleed. Those, those are suck. really hard. Yeah. So what do you do there? Yeah. cry go to the doctor <laughs> yeah basically you want to just do it, it's same still stuff. about the same thing yeah if you're on blood thinners and it bleeds you're in trouble yeah <laughs> you know that's a big deal right and posterior bleeds are harder to manage but most of the time like yeah a tampon will get back far enough hmm. like if you push it up in there yeah. and you can soak that sucker you know you just put afrin up to it and squeeze it wow so yeah i cool. mean most bleeds are not a serious problem yeah and a lot of the times it's just you're you're just not taking the proper you're not you're dumb properly taking care of your nose. Okay. You're still blowing. You don't know you're how not to do putting it. ointment in there. Yeah. yeah. So who knows? Anyways, those are just some basic things on bloody nose. I like that. Take Stuff care you of don't know out there. Nose. Organize your bloody nose. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks guys. We appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Please make sure to go subscribe to the bugging out podcast. Uh we would Certainly appreciate it. Also, we have the t-shirts coming out this next week on Monday, oh, yeah, April yeah, the yeah, yeah, 4th, yeah, yeah. I think. So watch the socials and get your, your shirt because it's sexy. It looks good. It is. This one looks really Mad good. Mad World. Mm-hmm. Oh, you it see is, this man. at Pack Sun next week. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Guarantee it. Maybe uh, Spencer's gifts. It <laughs> <laughs> could be Spencer's gifts. Who knows? Oh, man. Either one. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Thanks so much and stay survived.